Hello, welcome to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your Excel needs. Today, per demand, I'm sharing with you an accounts payable template that you can use to track your customer um, invoices, where they stand, and uh, what are the um, payments that are still uh, pending, and basically track your financial situation. Um, it's a very simple file, but actually gives you a lot. So there are five sheets here. There's the customer dashboard. Uh, we'll end the, the video on that where you see basically per customer their status. There's the invoice status itself, a payments sheet, invoices sheets, and a parameter sheet. So let's start with the parameters sheet. Here is where you set up the customer name. In this case, I just have you know, randomly created names using a, a names generator that I built. Um, if you're inter interested in that, you can find that here in the link above. Um, this is where you generate basically the uh, time frame for the invoice, meaning when is the invoice date and when do you expect what is the payment due date. All right, so this is where you set it up. Now you can set it up um in ranges um, here i just used um, data validation to set up set it up as a whole number between zero and nine 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 so you can generate any number um any whole number you can maybe um, block it to 120 or 90 or maybe you want just four options which you can also do with a simple uh, drop down list so this is this this part where you define the time frame Invoices is where everything starts. You have the uh, um, brownish orangish columns, which is where you input information, and the blue ones are automatic formulas all through the, the file. You, would, you will see this. So on the invoices, you just need to key in an invoice. So for example, let me just add an invoice for April. Uh, what that number is, here I just have random name, random numbers, but you could uh, maybe you have a you know some sort of system that generates those invoices. The customer name, you see, it's a list coming from here, so you can't just key in whatever you want. Okay, and again, this is just simple data validation. Well, not not that simple because it's a data validation using a list and an offset um, formula. Basically, it uh, if I add a name here. Um, Let's say just test one two three. Then you will uh, you will automatically see that in the end it appears, and if I take it out, then it will disappear. Okay, so I need to select the customer name. Uh, I don't know, Susie Lopez, and this, a description you can just describe here you see I, I gave an example of some sort of um, cellular phone lab so this could be I don't know a, another new phone or something like that the amount due let's say 850 yeah, and as you see the invoice time frame is being pulled automatically the due date and I also have the due date in the month so it's aggregating uh, the dates into monthly buckets which is going to be used for the customer dashboard so this is where you key in the invoices. Payments is where you key in the payments of the invoices. So you start off with the invoice number. And this is also a selection. And you see that it has a uh, closed um, closed options. This is coming from the invoice status. So basically, the invoice status is, is going to show you each invoice, how much you know the customer, the description, the amount due, the amount paid, the balance, and if it's open or not. And only the open invoices will appear over here, and this is what will um, compile the drop-down selections. So you cannot add more. You see, I cannot add another payment for invoice number three because that one is already balanced. So, for example, I'm going to select invoice number nine, and I already get the information, the customer name, the amount due, and the due date coming from the invoices. Now I'm going to key in the, the payment so let's say a payment of 40 and it was 
a given, let's say, on the 10th of April. So I get this flag that it was on time. There's 40 as a balance. And again, I'm showing you that the month in a monthly bucket. Uh, to switch between dates, normal date to a monthly bucket date, you can just use the formula over here, which is EO month or end of month. So this is going to give you the last day of the month. And then I'm just going to add plus one. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm also using the minus one for this and then plus one. So that gives me the first day of the month. So if you just I've changed the format just so it looks better, but if I bring it back to real date, it's going to give me the first day of April. So this is, I'm going to just complete this uh, invoice just to show you. Now the second one is going to be flagged as no. So those 40, uh, whatever currency you're using, those are going to be flagged as not on time. Now, you'll see I don't have an option to select number nine because that invoice is paid in full. So that's the payment section. The invoice status is going to show you all the invoices and this is automatically going to be pulled uh, using the offset function from the invoice. Okay. So um, Whatever you have over here will automatically populate over here. Um, all those, uh, everything. So up until here, it's from the offset. And here it's using a sum if from payment, balance, and open invoice. Just checking if it's a yes or a no, if the balance is greater than zero. And you'll notice that the formulas here, these three, have that if and uh, I just use like to use that in order to have blank rows. Otherwise, it's just going to show you NAs, and it's just just looks worse. Sorry, here, let's do this one, and you'll see why I added the if. Okay, instead of getting these values, 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 I'd rather have ifs, and I can just drag this down all the way to whatever I want. And the more invoices you have, this will still work. And then you can drag it even further and it's still going to work. The open invoices. Um, so this is nice. I'm using, this is Office 365. So I'm using some new features, filter and unique. So filter is just like an SQL query, if you're familiar. I'm basically filtering this column based on a condition for column G. And I'm using unique just because if I have more than one line here just to be on the safe side so um, this is what I'm doing and this is the drop down list for the payments part uh, if you're still here and you like this video please hit that nice little red button subscribe uh, like post a comment whatever you can do that could help this channel grow I really will appreciate it very much um, so this was the invoice status. This is this is a very important uh, sheet. The last one is the customer dashboard because sometimes you want to analyze your customers. Who's a good customer, who's a bad customer, and also have some sort of view for the entire um, month or even horizon. So I have either customer list, and again, this is using the same method with filter, sort, and unique. Um, so filter, as we talked about, that's going to pull the, all the customer names, sort and unique sort. I'm just, I just want to, um, sort it descending. So it's ABC and unique. Again, if I make some sort of a mistake and have the same customer here twice, I don't want that to affect, uh, this table because it will just populate the same name twice. That's why I'm using unique. All of the rest of these are, are, uh, formulas to, I'm just using some ifs from different sources. So here the sum if of the amount due is coming from um, the invoice part. So it's basically the sum if on this table. There's a paid sum if from this table. And the, the late payment is the same. Um, it's from this table also with the condition of a yes or no on the on time. So it's only showing you the yes, sorry, the no 
for that column and you see it's all also um, highlighted in yellow so you can see if someone is late and the balance of course so you have that rolling for as long as you want and I've also added a total you know, section basically it's the same calculations just without the dates so it's all being pulled from these without the dates so you can have as many as you want columns uh, um, here it doesn't matter because it's pulling from the same source and this is a nice view because you can see that this customer Joe Ali uh, owes 80 he paid 80 but 40 were late the same for Max uh, you can say see that Fatima paid thousand is is owing you one thousand etc etc so you can you know uh, it can really give you a nice view of, of your customers um, uh, you know uh, who's a good customer who's a bad customer and also what kind of uh, amount are you um, supposed to receive and of course you can add here also some uh, you know sums averages you know whatever you want to do you can build it whatever you want however you want so real quickly you have the parameters where you set up the time frame and the customer name you have to add the customer over here and the time frame for the invoice invoices is where you key in the data uh, these five columns payments you can only add payments for unclosed invoices and you need to define the payment quantity and date Invoice status is fully automatic. It's going to show you just the status per invoice and give you the ability to filter just the ones that need to be closed. And the customer dashboard is where you see the data on a customer level and on a monthly level. So if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, click that like button, share it with your colleagues and friends. I'm happy to read your comments, so please write whatever you want to say. Um, and catch you on the next video. Take care.